Schaumburg High School, about 31 miles northwest of Chicago in District 211. Hello, everybody. It's the HETV Game of the Week. The Schaumburg Saxons against their conference opponent, the Conant Cougars, and Coach Tom McCormick, who comes into the game with 500 wins. For Schaumburg, it's Coach Marty Manning's first year as head coach on this side of the thing. He grew up in this area. He had eight seasons with Hundley, but he comes in on an undersized Schaumburg Saxon team. What they lack in size, they more than make up for with leadership. Nine seniors on the Schaumburg side, three seniors on the Conant side of things. However, Conant is big. And Coach Tom McCormick says, if big is good, then we'll be good. But it doesn't always work out that way. Keep it with us. It's the HETV Game of the Week. Schaumburg Saxons and the Conant Cougars, and we're going to have it next. This one should be a close one. The Schaumburg Saxons come in as an undersized lineup. The Conan Cougars come in as a big, big team. It'll be interesting how this one plays out. Eric O'Brien alongside my partner, Jael Lorenzi, on behalf of HETV, Bruce Anderson and Rick Signorella. And it's a tip. Controlled by Schaumburg. Student section in it early. Driving the lane, looking for it and denied. Jordan Hughes got a hand on it. 6'10 center just rejected that. Patrolling the paint there. Tom McCormick and the, the Conant Cougars 
over 500 wins, but this group is pretty new. Just three seniors on the entire team. Hughes inside, can't get the sky hook to go. Outside, three ball, short. But controlled by Schaumburg and back out, they'll reset. Ball deflected off a knee for just a second. That's going to be Brendan Parker drawing the foul. And the foul's on Bradley, Kyle Bradley, number 24 for Conan. Here's Parker from the outside looking for help. Open shot, in and out, off the board. As Dimitri Rambas, keeping out for him. Averaging just under 14 points this season, Rambas and Woodard are. Good ball movement by Conan. Quilico went for the steal, came up empty. He was underneath, yes sir. Nice open look there. Jordan Hughes inside with a nice putback. And Conan is on the board. Driving the baseline. Oof. Not sure where that ball caught. Number 32, Daniel Sotos. Looked like it might have got him in the forehead. Parker out, oh. Woodard couldn't handle it for a second. Parker for three. And Parker's shown that he can hit that three just as well as a drive to the basket at any time, so they have to play him honestly. Foul called away from the ball on Conant, and Schaumburg will take over. Woodard. Now Quillico. Ooh. Close to a travel, but was able to regain his balance. This is Woodard from the corner. No. Controlled by Sotos. And he dishes it to his brother. That's James with the ball. He took the pass from Daniel. Back to Daniel. Strong move to the basket. Kyle Bradley, 6'4", junior. A nice back and forth early. On the top of the key, a fake, and it's gonna be a travel. Round balls with the travel that time. Good pace in this game so far. 457 up in the first quarter. Sotos takes the pass from his brother and now it's picked. This is Woodard. Hesitating for just a second and he gets the layup to fall. Good steal, easy basket for the Saxons. James Sotos lost the handle, trying to find Chima Oducha underneath. And it said Schomburg comes back with a point of their own. And Woodward with, a, with another layup, easy basket, second steal of the game. And the Saxons are capitalizing on these steals. Coach Tom McCormick wants to talk about it early. This team trailing by three. And we've already seen it. Marty Manning, with his undersized offense, was quoted as saying, we're just gonna try to get up and down the court. And they've done that. Undersized team, you have to run the floor, Jael. Yeah, I think that Conan, they've been trying to get it down low into Jordan Hughes, but every time they try to drop it in there, it's, it's been stolen. 
or turned over in some type of way. So they're struggling to establish that low post game. Early on for Conan, we're seeing the brother connection between James and Daniel Soto. So we'll look for that as this game progresses. This will be James to inbound. Trying to set something up. Conant has a big size advantage against Schaumburg. That one's thrown away. Another turnover for Conant here. Chimo Ducha, 6'6", junior. And Jordan Hughes comes back in the game after a short breather. And an unforced error, a travel is called on Woodard on the inbound. Well, he had no one in his face, no pressure whatsoever, just a complete mental lapse. That ball yanked down by Sotos. He was working on Parker. It's gonna be Chris Dolce. Underneath, and one. Kyle Bradley. And he went strong to the basket that time, got the foul as well. Good play. Drew the contact and finished with the left. Conant, the first throw line on the free throw, and they knock it down, no problem. Careful on that inbound. This time successful with Schaumburg. Woodard calling for play number one. We'll see what that is. Good movement for three. Knocks it down. Marquise Woodward with the three for the Saxons. The senior leadership and calling his own number on the play. Did number 10 for Schaumburg. It'll be interesting to see if they can get Jordan Hughes going down low, 6'10 center. I'm looking for a shot clock, I don't see one. Out to the right. That's Brandon Vincent. The kid in play haircut, the classic flat top. <laughs> nice moves. It's all about the retro. Oh, and a charge called underneath the basket. Kenny, Kenny Travis. Kenny Travis, sorry, JL. That's all right. Takes the charge. Good play. The six foot five, 200 pound junior held his ground. Three fouls to one, Conan. Looking underneath, wide open three. Just a bit short, clanks off the rim. Jordan Hughes with the rebound. Jason Shu couldn't get it to go. Shu, a multi-sport athlete, an excellent soccer player, I'm told. As Kenny Travis goes to the deck, trying to save that one. But the ball will go to Conant. Jason Shu. As Coach Manning told me, an excellent soccer star, but more proud of his National Honor Society induction. Air ball from the younger brother Sotos. And he's hearing it from the crowd. Just under two minutes in this first quarter. Excellent ball movement on the outside by Schomburg. Part of District 211. As you see, just to Woodard's left, trying to go right, and denied by Chris Dulce. Chris Dulce with a nice block. Would have none of that. 
10 to 7 in favor of the home team. As we look at this final 90 seconds of the first quarter. Parker, the biggest man on the floor, is on the wing. Back to Parker, and that's short. Trying to save it was Jason Shue and unable to do so. Every time they try to establish the low post game with Jordan Hughes, uh, Jordan Hughes is, is seeing the double team and the ball's getting stripped. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to go down low and try to establish that low post game. Absolutely, Jael. With the size advantage, you'd think Conan would try to push into the post a lot more than they have. They've been on the outside all day. They're trying to get inside and foul. That was Chris Dulce, and he will go to the line. Now, Jael, why is Dulce giving the line there if the shot wasn't quite up? I'm not exactly sure here. He was in the act of shooting, but yeah, they gave him the foul. Is that one of those situations where they give a continuation? Yes trying to help our viewers out at home. Dulce knocks them both down. And it's a one point game. I we, believe wouldn't, we wouldn't expect anything less from an in-conference rivalry. Outside. Mid-range jumper can't go for Parker. Oh, and losing his footing is Dulce there. Put the travel. Call for the travel, and we might get a towel out onto the floor. Or perhaps not. I thought maybe a freshman would come out of the crowd and have to clean that one up. Parker looking for space on the left side. Back up top now. Shoe. Driving the baseline and kicks it back to Parker. A floater can't go for Parker. And a little scrum will go in favor of Conan. Cameron Powell in the game for Schomburg. Spelled Cameron. But his teammates called him Cam Ron. He hates the E. That's number 40 in white. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a foul. They call him the arm bar. Sotos drove his shoulder. That's not allowed. So offensive foul called on Danny Sotos. And Conan is struggling offensively to get anything going here. He's chucking it up in the final seconds there. Nowhere close, off the glass, but that's about it. 10 to nine in favor of the home team. Schomburg Saxons and first year head coach, Marty Manning, first year for Schomburg, I should say. Eight seasons with Huntley High School. And Coach Manning grew up in this area, has a lot of respect for the Mid-Suburban League Basketball Conference, and he is more than happy to take the job. Yeah, what? Conan appears to be struggling here offensively. It's uh, with the lack of identity. It's uh, almost like they're, they're not sure what they want to do and who's, who's going to take over the game, who's going to be the catalyst offensively. They can't get anything going inside with Jordan Hughes uh, turning the ball over consistently. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Yeah. You know what, though, Jael? Manning, uh, as, as Martin, might not even be the best basketball player in his family. His wife, a thousand points and inducted into the Hall of Fame for Northern Illinois University just up the road. Oh, wow. <laughs> and those two 
have two beautiful children, Donovan, five years old, Marcus, three years old, and another baby on the way, Coach Manning tells us. Congratulations to him and his wife. Oh yeah, definitely. Picking back up in the second quarter, and Conan. Brandon Vincent. Dulce picks up his dribble. Sotos, not even close. Now you better not miss one in front of this crowd. That's Cameron losing his footing. Whoa! No call, he kept the dribble. Excellent play. He had good body control. I'm surprised he was able to keep his footing. A 6'2", 180-pound sophomore with the wherewithal to keep the dribble. Cameron Powell. Great defense on Hughes. Does it on the offensive end, gets right back down court, and does it on the defensive end. You like that in the sophomore. Oh, yeah. Chima Aducha has been uh, active around the glass and um, playing really good defense as well. Sorry, JL, I should have been more specific. I meant Cameron Powell. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you're, Him too. <laughs> but you're right, Oducha has had quite an impact as well, especially on that defensive end. Oh, going for a steal, risking it all. Dolce came up empty. His teammates bailed him out. Baseline. Nice dish. Are we going to have a charge or a block? We have a charge. Charges the call. Sometimes you could be a little bit too too aggressive. That's the fourth team foul on Schaumburg. That's Powell's first. But you gotta love his aggressiveness, definitely. And a nice coaching moment for Marty Manning over there. On the near side, just to our left. There's a shot, hits back of the rim. Trying to control it was Oducha and unable to do so. A lot of length, had it on those fingertips. Probably for about three seconds, he couldn't find it. He's got some big shoes though too, those might hit the baseline. And the Ducha replaced by Kyle Bla uh, Bradley, Kyle Bradley in the lineup. Woodard working on Dolce. A couple of seniors going at it. Shoe. A little behind the back action. All the way across court. Connor Garrity, another senior. One of nine for Schaumburg. Woodard stepped back. Can't get it to go. And saved nicely by Daniel Sotos. Sotos in front of the drums. Picked out of the air by Woodard. Like a safety picking off a quarterback coming over the middle. Yes. Wide open, he opted to pass it up. Connor Garrity, surprised by that. Driving baseline, shoe. Looking underneath, can't go. And he's rejected by Sotos, who was waiting for him. Sotos, right hand. Ramos tried to get it go, nothing doing. A little shimmy and another travel. The second unforced travel called on Woodard. Out of the ordinary for a senior to have two mental lapses in a half. Yeah, that's got to be disappointing. He's a better ball handler, and he's uh, fundamentally sound. I don't know what's what's going on tonight, but had two turnovers already this early in the game. Not a lot of scoring in the second quarter. A three-point advantage 
for the Schaumburg Saxons, up 12 to nine against their conference opponent. Conan in the blue jerseys, they have the ball. Schaumburg, white jerseys, maroon trim. Three pointer. James Soto from the outside. Three point range, and it's good. And a tie ball game. Maybe they can loosen up the inside with that outside shooting. They can keep hitting those threes. Up top, they'll reset. You know, Jael, I made a comment about the shot clock earlier. I realized high school, there is none. <laughs> Good look, but unable to get it to go is Rambus. Soto's left hand gets it to go. Over three Schomburg defenders. The 5'9 junior and brother of returner senior Daniel Sotos. A nice left-handed touch. And it's refreshing to see the younger Soto going to the basket aggressively and, and, and Conan just establishing themselves offensively like that. Right now it's Schaumburg. That's their first. Both coaches with four in their pocket. Other than the first points of the game, Conan regains the lead for the first time. Well, you knew it would be a good one. Coach Tom McCormick, 500 plus wins on his track record. Tonin was 22 and six last year, eight and two in the conference for a second place finish. Looks like he might have gotten an arm on camera, nothing called, and it's an air ball. Yeah, it did look like it was deflected, but no call. And it's Conan's ball. Flip the script, first year for coach Marty Manning, and last year's Record wasn't what he wishes. He took over a job that was a fifth place finish in the Mid-Suburban League West Conference. Windmill, nice move by Sotos, but unable to finish. Slice through the defense. Shu was looking for room on the right. Pass it up. Parker up top, it looks like he's wearing pants. Those are just those compression, I want to say sleeves, but they're on the legs. Interesting, you usually see those on the arms, not on the legs, but. Foul Plus. away from the ball on Schomburg, so Conan will take possession. 2.23 remaining in the half. Conan Cougars lead the Schomburg Saxons by a score of 14 to 12. And Bradley down low, calling for the ball. Sotos to Sotos. And the brothers can't finish the connection. Driving the inside. Awkward shot, but he gets it to go. Demetrius Rombus. He makes him pay on the other end. As we mentioned earlier, Rhombus and Woodard, a couple of seniors averaging just under 14 points a game each. They show you why right there. Oh, a tough drive for Sotos. I thought it'd be cleaned up by his teammate, but unable to get the easy bucket. Good action underneath the boards for the quote undersized Schaumburg Saxons. Yeah, Conan with a few rebounds underneath uh, and couldn't get the putbacks. That's Latrell Washington setting the screen for Rambus. Washington number 44 into the ball game for the first time.
All knotted up at 14, the final minute of the half. Bradley down low, and an easy bucket. Great find. So toast to Bradley. Final 30 seconds. Well, they had Rambas for just the second underneath the key. And wide open his shoe, but a loose ball prevents him from getting the ball. Now they need to run it. Final 15. Schomburg wanting to push the pace. At least four of them were. Wide open shoe. No. Cleaned up Winner. Block, sorry, that was Powell. The Schomburg's going to go into the half trailing by two. They couldn't get the shot they wanted, but they got a shot. They just couldn't hit it. Oh, that could have been a big momentum swing. Not that there isn't momentum on Schomburg's side, but hitting that wide open three to take a one point advantage, they would have been feeling pretty good going into the halftime. But you have to feel good about a two point spread, especially with what we made of them being undersized, the Saxons. Yeah, I think uh, Schomburg played really well. They kept the tempo up. They made some turnovers and made some mistakes, but both teams uh, were playing really intense, and it's a well-played game. Or well-played half, rather. The scoring so far, 16 to 14 in favor of Conant. James Sotos and Kyle Bradley lead the way. Bradley with seven points. Sotos, James that is, not his brother Daniel, with five points. On the other side, Schomburg. You have Woodard with nine. And he sat out the last couple of minutes of the half. Here's the uh, scoreboards having a little bit of an issue with Schomburg's point total, huh? So it's 14, only two people at points. <laughs> But we're going to take a break. It's the game of the week. The Schomburg Saxons hosting the Conant Cougars. They trail by two. It's the HETV game of the week. Come back. We'll have the second half for you. Back at Schomburg High School. Conant on top of Schomburg, 16 to 14. The advantage for the Cougars and head coach Tom McCormick, who comes into the ball game just over 500 wins on his impressive career. Eric O'Brien, Jael Lorenzi for HETV's Game of the Week. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Jael, what have you seen so far this half? Is it a back and forth? Yeah, I think it's impressive that, uh, I mean, Conan is up by two, 16-14, and they haven't even been able to uh, get their inside game established. So it'll be interesting to see in the second half if they establish Danny Soto's down low and Jordan Hughes. What do you make of Schomburg being supposedly undersized but going inside running the floor, and then on the flip side of things, Conan being the bigs, but yet playing the perimeter. Yeah, it's, it's like a helter-skelter. You would think it would be the other way around, but it's interesting to see that. And I don't think, I think uh, re, uh, roles will be reversed in the second half. That was Woodard on the steal. And now setting up plays up top. That's Shoe. Shoe with a lot of space. Not taking the three, though. He missed one right before the end of the first half. And you wonder if it shakes his confidence. Mid-range jumper. And Woodard, Woodard leading his team with, a, with nine points, trying to reestablish himself here in the second half. Speaking of leading the team, Bradley, number 24 for Conan. That's what he did in the first half, but he turns it over there. That's Parker. Cleaned up by Woodard. And Woodard picks up right where he left off at in the first half. Now he has 11. That easy layup. 11 points for the senior, the smallest guy. Cleaned up the basketball. And that's where you have to be kicking yourself if you're Coach Tom McCormick with all these bigs on the floor. How does Woodard 
come through and get that wide open of a look. Well, you know, it's all about positioning and it's all about uh, boxing out. And if you're not fundamentally sound and you're not boxing out, then, I mean, everything goes out the window. Conan will look to reset with James Soto for three. And James Soto with the hot hand in the second half. Eight Pick. points for Soto. Oh, nearly thrown out of bounds. Woodard had two early travel calls on him with no one guarding him. A couple of mental lapses, and he nearly threw the ball out of bounds right there. That would have been his third mental lapse for the senior. Parker passes up a wide open shot, drives the lane. Rejected by Hughes. <laughs> And that's what they need, Jordan Hughes to assert himself offensively and defensively. And Jordan Hughes does exactly that, lays it up off the, pit, off the glass for an easy bucket. Conan starting to use their length. Underneath shoe, left hand. Oh, what a crisp pass by Demetrius Rombos. Catching shoe cutting like that for the easy basket. Schomburg cuts it to three. Chris Dulce. Draws the foul going to his left. And here we see where the teams are actually uh, establishing their true identity. Schomburg with their speed and uh, Conant with their height and inside game. And now Dulce will check out of the ball game to get a little breather. And a quick lesson from Coach Tom McCormick and company. Conant High School in the blue, Schomburg in the white. And Dulce replaced by Brandon Vinson in the game, number 15. Sotos. You love to see that aggressiveness, even though he missed on that shot. There's no secret, Schomburg wants to run the floor fast, but Conant is doing a great job getting back on defense. Wide open from the corner. Jason Shue with the three. Schomburg ties up the ball game. Eric O'Brien and Jael Lorenzi for the HETV Game of the Week. Thank you for joining us, everybody. 21 knotted up. The Mid-Suburban League West Conference. And Jordan Hughes goes back to the bench and he'll be replaced by Chima Oducha. How fun is that name to say? <laughs> Number 21 was my nightmare coming into this. With the right hand, the older brother Sotos, that's Daniel. And that's what they want to see, that's encouraging. They want to, they, they want him, they want to get him going. Because he can, he can fill it up offensively. Parker. Out the camera. Underneath Parker, great find. And he finishes. Connor Garrity with a great pass there. Feeds Brendan Parker, cutting to the basket for an easy basket. And the Saxons are definitely taking advantage of their speed advantage that they have and cutting to the basket and playing good fundamental basketball. Timeout, Conan. Well, while we have a second, you know, amidst the, the turmoil in the United States, say with the, the racial things going on and just all kinds of, of negativity, you need a little bit of a holiday pick-me-up. 
Blessings in a backpack night here in Schaumburg. Free admission with any canned food. And they've already raised over a hundred canned foods. Or I should say, uh, they've already accumulated over a hundred canned foods for those in need around this holiday time. And that's awesome. It's always uh, a time to give back, but this is definitely, uh, in the holiday season, a great time to give back. There's many people that are less fortunate, and uh, it's for a good cause. What a scene it was last night on Lakeshore Drive being shut down for 15 minutes by a large crowd of protesters following the Eric Garner ruling. A peaceful protest, though, according to Chicago Police. And Cal Brady has it stripped by Brennan Parker, and he gets it back. Bradley to a Ducho pass up, probably an easy basket. And Soto drives to the basket, and... A questionable and a blocking foul. Called on Connor Garrity. That was a certainly, questionable call. Certainly looked as though number 24 had position. And Danny Soto could have easily been called for the charge, for the offensive foul. Conant perfect on the night at the line, four for four. So Garrity will check out of the ball game with two fouls. And Soto hits the second from the charity stripe. Oducha tried to spin around the defense to get positioning on that free throw attempt. He's got about four inches from the three. Jason Shu, the multi-sport star. Can he shoot or what? He can light it up. Eight points in the game tonight. And a couple from three-point range. We questioned maybe his confidence was shaken after the miss before half. I'd say he answered the bell there. And Soto tried, James Soto tries to match him on the other end and misses. Soto Sons wants it again. Oh, rims out. And again, out. Soto can't connect. You have to love the kid's aggressiveness. I mean, just asking for the ball and, and, and trying to make those big shots to bring his team back. Aggressiveness, confidence. You gotta like everything you see out of number 11. Most definitely. I'm sure it helps to have an all-conference brother. That's what Daniel Sotos was last year. Raymond Parker with a shot in the paint and it's good. Three-point advantage for the home crowd. 28 to 25 in favor of Schaumburg. And this is an exciting, well-played game here. Two contrasting styles, and Schaumburg has really taken advantage of the speed advantage that they have and running up and down the court and catching guys cutting to the basket. And they're just playing relentless defense. No shortage of schemes on either side of the floor. Tom McCormick, 500 plus wins on his impressive career. Well, this game is far from over with. Hardy Manning for Schomburg. Now, how about this? A degree in business from the University of Illinois and a master's in education. Oh, wow. I'm sure he knows how to get to his players and he can probably draw up a few things as well. Former basketball player himself, played in this area for the Village of Hoffman Estates, won the 1996 state championship as a point guard with the Hoffman Estates. Had some Division Three offers, but turned them all down in favor of education. And it's very clear, although he wants players, they have to be student athletes first. Emphasis on students. And that's refreshing to hear that, because so often we see where uh, there's a lot of compromising going on for the talent and recruiting. So when you see someone that stands up for education like that and 
Reaching in was Parker. Sotos tried to go over him. Underneath, easy bucket. Jordan Hughes with the putback, and that's what they need. They, they want to establish that inside game. Kona does. Well, that has to feel good for number 44, Jordan Hughes. The senior missed all of last year with a broken foot. Months of rehab, struggle, getting back in the weight room, getting his confidence back. Tom McCormick has to be happy with the way his seniors played tonight. You never know how people are going to come back from an injury that costs them an entire year. Yeah, well, I, what I don't understand is they have uh, Kenny Travis, who's 6'5", playing him, fronting him in the post. Denied on the other side, and some great defense. Brendan Parker on Kyle Bradley with the rejection. A lot of action as we are going on that rant. We apologize, <laughs> but we know you can see it. That's been an exciting ball game so far. Oh, yes. Final 10 seconds of the third quarter. Schomburg a one-point advantage. And they're going to hold for the last shot. It'll be Parker working Bradley. Bradley, a hand in Parker's face. Parker at the buzzer. Gets it to go. Outstanding. And Bradley returns the favor on the block on, on, on Parker, but Parker still managed to, <laughs> with his second attempt, second effort, to make the second shot. Brendan Parker. Maintains his composure after getting denied and nails that mid-range on the fadeaway, hitting the deck as he is in the process. That's senior leadership, and that's part of nine seniors on the Schaumburg Saxons. And Brendan Parker and Kyle Bradley, they're definitely familiar with one another. Inspirations for Coach Marty Manning, John Wooden, Coach K, and Dean Smith. Who wouldn't want to be inspired by them? And we were talking about earlier how much Manning puts an emphasis on the student side of athlete. You need to look no further than one of his alum from Huntley, Amanze Ejikizi. <laughs> had 10 offers from Division I schools. The list included DePaul, Wright State, Indiana State, and Loyola. Where did he go? He chose Belmont University. Belmont University. Where is that? Believed in the education system. I've done plenty of high school football games this season. I think I heard the I believe that we will win chant at just about every single one of them. USA Soccer taking control. Taking control there. Kenny Travis with the basket from Rumbles. And Schaumburg is just so fundamentally sound. I mean, they're playing this game and they're really taking advantage of their speed and being able to go to the basket and cutting to the basket. Five point advantage for Schaumburg, looking to add to it. A steal by Garrity, give to Woodard. A questionable decision to go back up with it for Powell. Not questionable for the second time around. And he was relentless under the basket and he's strong. I mean, you could see the power, the upper, upper body strength going up for the putback. Four Conant defenders engulfed him the first attempt he tried to go up. Certainly could have found a teammate. And then the path cleared, and he was able to draw the foul. Misses the front end. And Jordan Hughes will go back to the bench, replaced by Chima Olducha, number 21. Misses them both. Can't believe it. Off or not. Still a five-point advantage for Schaumburg. Wide open three, Sotos. Off the back iron. Up and over, too strong for Oducha. Woodard 
will look to set something up. Travis trying to set a screen. Now looking for the give and go. Powell opts out. And from the strike. Keep it. Beg your pardon, folks. My uh, spotting sheet was in the shot there a little bit. And Schaumburg up by five here. Time out. If there's a time to make a run, this is the time to make the run. Yeah, no, We're calling it. No problem to let the folks at home see what we work with here. <laughs> a lot of time and effort goes into a broadcast. And this is a little something of, of what we use to spot all these players. All the ins and outs of the production. I'd like to give, pull back the curtain a little bit for the folks at home. The HETV Game of the Week. Schaumburg Saxons and the Conant Cougars. Schaumburg on top by five, 32 to 27. 6.15 remaining. And if I'm Conant, I'm trying to establish something inside. If, if my center 6.10, there's no way I'm gonna allow you to cover him with someone who's 6.5. There's no way. I'm gonna take my chances. And so there, I would make every effort possible to establish that low post game. That is the voice of my partner, Jael Lorenzi. I am Eric O'Brien. Bruce Anderson is our producer. And the man that makes the magic. Well, I guess both of you make the magic, don't you, Bruce? Bruce and Rick Signorella. On the camera, yeah. Working the magic so you can see it at home. Foul called. They got someone for rapping. And rapping. And Brandon Vincent comes in the game and... Brandon Vincent looks like he might bust a couple rhymes when he gets in there. I love that kid to play haircut. <laughs> And Chima Ducha goes goes to the bench. He's probably uh, he probably has a little bit of a rhyme in him. Hard drive with the left side and finishing with the right on a nice touch. That's Sotos. Last year's All Conference. Strong forward. Parker finishes the dish by Rambas. 34-29, Saxons. And they have such quick hands. They have another steal, Schaumburg does. Vincent losing the handle there. Shoe is wide open in the corner and calling for it. Now Schaumburg will reset. Woodard a no-look pass. Parker. Nothing doing. This is Chris Dulce. And Excellent has hustle play by Jason Shue. Picking his pocket. And they've been doing that the entire second half, it seems like. Every time uh, the Cougars go down the court and they try to establish their offense or something down low, the ball stolen by Schaumburg. Tremendous defense. The speed starting to get to Conan, perhaps. Woodard, tough drive. And an easy finish for Brandon Parker. And Brendan Parker quietly leading all scores with 13 here in the fourth quarter. Schaumburg ahead 26, 36, 29. A seven point lead, the largest on the night for Schaumburg. A quick three pointer from Sotos, and he cuts it to four. Just like that, that quick, Daniel Soto can, can fill it up. And he hits the three. Woodard loses the handle for just a second. And the Cougars need to clamp down on defense here. 
get a couple of stops. And oh, excellent fake by Rombos, but he just couldn't get it to go. And, and Conan turns the ball over again. And another timeout. 36-32. So what do you think, Eric? Remaining in the ball game, you were saying, Jael? What do you think? You think the quick hands of uh, the Schaumburg Saxons have affected Conan? Well, I'd, I'd certainly say that it has. But if you're referring to the Vincent play, I think he just lost a handle. It looked like he kind of wanted to pass it, and then at the last second decided, oh, I don't want to do this, and just, just slipped out. But the speed of Schaumburg is what I'm seeing start to get to Conan. But they just threw the ball out of bounds, and no one... Who was the cause of that? The ghost of, the, uh, of Schaumburg's defense? <laughs> Pushing the envelope. Conan may be right now. This is where you look to get the hands, or get the ball, excuse me, in the hands of your returner. Chris Dulce, senior. Daniel Soto, all-conference senior. Kyle Bradley, junior. Those are your returners for Conan. Down four, with a little under four minutes to play. Look for them to have a big impact. They have the height and the weight advantage. They just have to play to that strength and, and take advantage of it. I would get Daniel Soto more, more involved in the game offensively. And we haven't touched on this all night with this canned food drive, the uh, blessings in a backpack. What a crowd this is. Student section's been in all night. Jason's shoe's been underneath all night. Vincent pulls it back. James Soto to his brother Daniel. Deep. Oh, and off the glass, he hits the three. Daniel Soto for Conan. The all-conference senior cuts the lead to one. With 3-12 left in the game. Oh. And Daniel Soto called for the foul on Woodard. Inside the paint. Might as well have been a clothesline. Yeah, it looked like a football, uh, like they were playing football there for a minute. But you don't want to give them those easy baskets. They've been giving up those easy baskets all game. Jahel football might be <laughs> taking it easy. I call that <laughs> WWF or whatever it's known as now. You, I guess UFC. Well, at least he was popular now, huh? Well, at least he was nice enough to, to give them the hand and, and help them up afterwards so am i showing my age to these high school students by talking about the <laughs> wwf not at all shoe kicks it out shoe from the outside jason shoe and he's been hitting all game from from the outside and it's because of their outside shooting that Schaumburg has been able to take control of this game, as well as their defense. 11 points for Jason Shoup. Well short of the target for Daniel Sotos. And Schaumburg up by four, 39-35, here in the fourth quarter with two minutes left in the game. Three ball, Parker. Careful, it could get away from him quickly now. Conan down by seven. And that could have been the final nail in the coffin. It might be too early to make a statement like that, but it appears Schaumburg's running away with this game. The quick strikes of the Schaumburg Saxons. Showing off their range. Don't say sets a screen. James Soto's trying to set up for for a three. They're going to want to take the shot and take it quick. They're wasting too much time here. Conan is under two minutes wide open. Don't say short. Final ninety seconds. 
And you might see Schaumburg here try to run the clock down. Timeout, Schaumburg. 30 second timeout, ball possession. A seven point lead and possession. And this is a great call by the coach. This is a great timeout because it allows you to regroup, refocus, and, and develop a plan for the next, for the last minute and 26 seconds so, they're, so the team's focused and there are no unnecessary turnovers. If you are just joining us, welcome to the AGTV Game of the Week. And you've missed a good one so far, but the best is yet to come. Eric O'Brien, Jael Lorenzi, Schaumburg Saxon, and the Conan Cougars. It was close early on. It's really been close the entire ball game. Conan went into halftime with a two-point advantage. Schaumburg's fought their way back, and a couple of quick strikes from three have them with a seven-point advantage. And Schaumburg has played really well. I mean, in the second half especially, defensively and offensively. So Woodard has the ball, and he'll be fouled by Dolce. Woodard goes to the line. Uh, that's only the no, he won't go to the line. team foul of this half. So quite a few more before we get to free throws. And you might see quite a few more. <laughs> Can't find anybody, so a timeout for the men in white. A minute and 22 seconds left in the game. Schaumburg up 42-35. I love this. This is how far social media is covering. Can we get a shot of this? The Schaumburg timeout bench has a student or someone tweeting, I'm assuming tweeting, or Instagramming live shots of their timeout. Either that or it's a Conan spy trying to get the play. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's safe to say that he's tweeting. Oh, how far we've come. Or perhaps as my esteemed producer is letting me know, it might be for high school view. That could be more reasonable of an explanation. But it's not as fun, Bruce. Wait to tell me those things after the show. <laughs> the boys in white, that's the Schaumburg Saxons. They're the home team in front of their home crowd. What I would call a sellout crowd, but I think everyone got in free tonight with a canned food on a nice charity drive. There's a foul. Still have a couple more to give before we get to the line. And the boys in white, that being the Saxons, have a seven point advantage in the final 80 seconds of the ball game. The boys in blue, a little bit bigger, but the speed has certainly overwhelmed them as of late. Yeah, they couldn't combat the speed and they couldn't get their inside game going, so. And that's why Schaumburg has the lead and will probably be victorious in this game. All hope is not lost quite yet on Tom McCormick and the Conant Cougars. But it certainly looks bleak. He might have to wait around for his 502nd victory. Now 16 fouls for Conant. So the next foul will put a Schaumburg Saxon on the line. Going for a quick steal. We'll see if Woodard will hold it. Parker's going to be the one. And the Cougars trapping, definitely trying to get the ball out of the hands of the Saxons. Foul on Kyle Bradley. We'll put Brendan Parker on the line. And basketball's like boxing. I mean, it's a contrast of styles. And that's what makes the game or makes the match. And in this particular game, Schaumburg was able to take advantage of the speed and, and their quickness. Parker gets the roll on the first shot. And he'll be awarded a second free throw. That one a little bit more confident. 
Nine point advantage. The most of the night for Schaumburg. And the Cougars looking for a three point shot here. Final minute, don't say from three. Gets iron. And Jason Shu will, will go to the line, fouled by Daniel Soto. Parker's led the way with 18 points tonight for the Schaumburg Saxons. Jason Shu, not far behind, posting a respectable 11, make it 12. And Woodard, just a few points shy of his average of 14. 11 tonight for number 10. And Conan will try once again to hit a three-point shot. Daniel Soto lets it go, no good. Second free throw was good for Shu, and that'll put him at 13 points on the evening. <laughs> No one's leaving their seats tonight. The home crowd going to go home very happy in this one, especially at student section, for some reason wearing construction worker hats. I'll have to get the story for that one on the next broadcast here. <laughs> Giving spirit fingers to Woodard. Woodard climbing closer. To that average, just one point shy of it with 13 tonight. 13 point advantage for Schaumburg. As we near the final 30. And you can definitely hear the fat lady singing, at least humming right now. Ninth team foul. Four fouls for a couple of Conan Cougars. Not that it makes much difference at this point. Vincent, three. Now the ball comes down. It is symbolic of the, uh, of the Cougars' play tonight where the ball gets stuck between the rim and the glass. <laughs> I believe that was Brandon Vinson. Well, there's Sotos on the drive. But I believe that was Kyle Bradley that helped move the action along by getting up there and unhinging the ball. And Schaumburg will run out the time here, and you can put this one in the W column. Unhinging the Conant Cougars is the Schaumburg Saxons. Big victory for first year head coach Marty Manning and the Schaumburg Saxons. 48 to 37 over their mid suburban league West rivals, the Conant Cougars. I like just letting the band go for just a second. Game. No, I think uh, Schaumburg played inspired. They played intense. They played great defense throughout the entire game. Uh, they knew they would have some trouble trying to get in the paint and try to establish something inside uh, with, with the height and the length of, uh, of Conan, of the Cougars. So they went to the outside shooting and they were able to hit and establish the outside uh, early in the game. And in the second half, they just piggybacked on that and continue to do that and uh, you know get players cutting to the basket with their motion offense and they were able to take control of the game ultimately. Well they look good all night did the Schaumburg Saxons led by their nine seniors certainly play composed. Leader Brandon Parker had a heck of a ball game with 18 a couple of Saxons 
short behind with 13, but it was Parker who commanded this game. On the flip side, the Sotos brothers certainly had something to say about it, but it fell short in the end. Final score from Schaumburg High School, the Saxons 48, an 11 point victory over the Conan Cougars by a score of 37. This has been the HETV Game of the Week. Thank you for joining us everybody. For my partner, J.L. Lorenzo,